Hello, today I want to talk about the art exhibition. When exhibiting has become impossible, it's important to recognise that the exhibition is only one of several methods for art to be encountered. So, instead of taking the exhibition for granted as a natural or essential aspect of art, I want to consider it as a specific historical form. There has been, there has been no better time to reconsider the period in art history prior to the formation of the conventional art exhibition than today, when exhibitions have been postponed and cancelled all over the world. We could also use the current situation to revive interest in the practices of anti-establishment artists who rejected the exhibition format, the gallery, the museum and its publics. However, in this short video, I will focus neither on this critical history nor on the long history of art prior to the invention of the exhibition. Instead, I want to look at the emergence of a specific moment when the exhibition became the dominant mode in which art was encountered. Exhibitions of artworks were rare before the 19th century. There were annual or biannual salons and academy exhibitions, and there were picture shops, but there were no galleries devoted to the exhibition of artworks. When the Royal Academy in Paris was abolished by the French revolutionaries, Painters and sculptors lost the opportunity to participate in the biannual salons, which were the great public events for fine art, and which many painters and sculptors relied on to show their work to prospective buyers and to the public in general. Jacques-Louis David, the leading painter of the day, responded to the new revolutionary circumstances by renting a room privately to display his latest work to the public. In the accompanying pamphlet, David explained, the painter's practice of displaying his works to the eyes of his fellow citizens in return for individual remunerations is observed in England, where it is called exhibition. David was possibly thinking of Joseph Wright of Derby, who presented his epic contemporary history painting, View of Gibraltar, as the centrepiece of a one-man show held by the artist at Robin's Rooms Covent Garden in London between April and June 18, 1785. This is perhaps the first exhibition of its kind. David here was operating with a very narrow, strict definition of the exhibition, which differentiated it from the salons and other earlier methods for art being displayed or made public. If we have a much broader definition, then not only would we include the salons in Paris and the annual exhibitions of the Royal Academy in London as exhibitions, we might go so far as to say that the presentation of the masterpiece, for instance, to the Guild by the Apprentice was also an exhibition of sorts. And the courtly gallery of paintings in a, no in a noble palace might also be considered an exhibition, albeit to the narrowest concept of the public. I would argue that it is the dominance of the exhibition form from the 19th century onwards that guides us in recognising these earlier forms as variants of the exhibition. When the exhibition becomes the norm, we see exhibition-like activities everywhere and everywhere. And this is important as part of the historical understanding of the exhibition and its deep roots in a range of methods for encountering artworks. But what I'm interested in now is the differences between these different forms, not their similarities. Let's look at David again. David's exhibition does not take place in a gallery, just a privately rented room, and there is no intermediary dealer or gallerist or curator to host the exhibition for him. For David, the patron and the academy are not replaced with a dealer or a collector or a curator, but the public directly who do not purchase the work as in the art market to come, but pay an entrance fee. The exhibition was also unusual from our perspective in terms of its duration. David had spent four years producing the painting and hired the venue to exhibit it for a further five years. Other experimental blends of commerce and the public were developed for the fine arts at the same time. Prints, in particular, when authorised, 
were a very lucrative income stream for painters. When they were unauthorised, they were very lucrative uh, incomes for printmakers. William Hogarth placed advertisements in popular newspapers. He designed subscription tickets, which he signed as limited edition prints. And he also published a sales list for prints. In one instance, the March to Finchley, 1746, the subscription of seven shillings and sixpence, followed by half a guinea on delivery of the print, was supplemented by paying an extra three shillings to enter a lottery for the original painting. So these are all unusual, unconventional ways from our perspective in thinking about how a painting or an image might come to, to be encountered by the public. We can think of David, Hogarth and their contemporaries as seeking out different types of public, different compositions of the public and different conceptions of the public, which will be standardised later by the rise of the gallery and the museum in the 19th century. In their different ways, they can be included within a longer history of the artist-run exhibition, which was essential for the avant-garde and was revived in the subcultural forms of the contemporary art in the 1960s and 1970s. The gallery exhibition, I want to say, did not rise out of the ashes of the salon exhibition exactly, but has its roots also in an artisan practice that existed alongside the academies and was a rival to it. Since the Guild had a monopoly on who could sell paintings and who could open a shop, the first art dealers were always painters who sold the work of other Guild members or academicians. The art gallery and its specific form of exhibition, therefore, resembles a shop today because it takes its first steps in this direction within the artisan's shop. Before this development, however, an alternative to the exhibition emerged through the invention of lithography in the early 19th century. The public life of artworks in reproduction that appears to us today perhaps as the result of the invention of photography was already active in many ways by the widespread use of lithography in the first half of the 1800s. Lithographic prints of artworks, we could say, allowed a wider public to see an artwork beyond the physical and cultural boundaries of the exhibition of the work itself. So, before the exhibition becomes the primary means whereby artworks reach the public, lithography gave a new public life to artworks and in that sense gave a new idea of art as being public. The modern format of the gallery exhibition is shaped by the speculative dealer system. The earlier picture shop became a gallery by dealing exclusively in paintings and prints rather than selling these alongside antiques and other collectibles. The art historians Harrison and Cynthia White summed up the depth of the shift involved in the drift from the twin system of Guild and Academy to the modern art market by observing brilliantly that it was artists, not paintings, who were the focus for the dealer. The salon was focused on works of art individually. And one way of seeing the difference between the two systems is to compare the famous salon hang with the modern practice, modern practice of exhibiting works by a single artist or a single school of artists or a single movement or a given theme. With the introduction of the catalogue, both the print reproduction of the artwork and the publication of art criticism were relocated in a subsidiary role to the exhibition. Nevertheless, art writing and photography retained some of their promise as alternatives to the gallery system and the exhibition form that is its principal mode of the organisation of artworks. This is why the avant-garde and critical theory have often put their hope in lens-based practices, print media digitalization and so on, as well as high theory, discourse, critical reflection, and so on. Moments of crisis such as global COVID-19 pandemic allow us therefore to reimagine art without the domination of the exhibition form of the gallery. Thank you. <laughs>